What is this? You'll see. What oh, are those do? Oh. Is that a cardboard shredder? Yeah, that's a semi big rig dyno. Guys, we made it up here to Tennessee. I'm here with Rob Fitzgerald <laughs> with Fitzgerald Collision and Repair. Uh, yeah. Rob, say hello to YouTube. Rob, Rob's not <laughs> on YouTube very much. Uh, he's been in some of Tim Gentry's videos. Tim's back here in the shop. We'll check on him in just a second. But we've loaded up everything that you've seen in the video yesterday and uh, got it moved up here to Tennessee. We're going to be joining forces with the Fitzgerald Collision crew. Yep. Um, Robert and I go way back, even before Tommy and Brian. <laughs> well, I guess Brian would be like the, the, the kind of the proxy. Probably the first guy you talked so, about. Um, but Brian introduced me to Robert here, and Robert and I had some plans before, some issues that I had come up. You guys are kind of familiar with that a little bit. But Robert's been here from the get-go. He's always believed in me, and he brought an opportunity to the table for myself and Ryan and Lake. A lot of people asked if Ryan and Lake was going to be moving there. Have the whole crew. The whole crew. Everybody yeah. signed up. Lake's right there. His dad lives like 45 minutes away from here in Kentucky, so he's kind of excited about that. Actually worked out pretty good. Yeah, it? yeah. Yep. Ryan's always down to travel. Yeah, I'll go anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we've moved up here, and we're going to be joining the crew here, shooting some videos in this giant shop. We're going to tour that. Uh, and getting kind of to tackle the Fitzgerald Collision social media and bringing them to the internet world because right now Fitzgerald Collision focuses on kind of a contract work and mega fleets, but really wanting to tackle the owner operators. And yeah, I think more than anything, we just want to get our name out there. I mean, we've we're kind of the opposite of you guys. I mean, you guys have your name out there. And yeah, we've spent the last eight nine years building this company, and, and you know, we still have people that wreck here in Tennessee and they don't even know who we are yeah so I mean for me it's like it works out pretty good with you guys to, to work together because we're we're looking to try to show what we do mm -hmm. and uh, try to get our name out there and you know, obviously you guys are pretty good at that part of it we're, yeah. not, we're not so good at that part so <laughs> so that's the plans We've, we're bringing all of our equipment up here Brutus is going to be going on undergoing a transformation in the next month and a half or so we're wanting to start a towing division because right yeah. now FCR uh, tows trucks in here for fleets to get worked on, but not doing a ton of like side of the road towing. And that's yeah, we don't the, do any roadside recovery. It's something I've always wanted to get into, but not something I had really the time to dive into because we got so many other projects going on. And so when you had mentioned the possibility of getting into that, I thought yeah. it'd be perfect. So let's just grow that together. So we're going to grow it together, figure it out. Tim's here. He's got some insight on the towing stuff. We're going to be working close with him. Um, but yeah, we need all the help we can get. Yeah, we're tackling it. We're gonna be t learning the whole process of building a towing business. We're gonna try to bring as much of that to social media as possible. So yeah. we'll quit blabbing. Brutus is eventually gonna be getting a DTU. We'll see. You'll see that here in a little bit. We're gonna walk down the hill and check out that um, DTU stands for detachable towing unit. I think. Right? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> I told you I know nothing about towing. <laughs> yeah. So we've got to figure all that out. But they've got one here that's all in some of the trucks they use for picking up stuff. That's obliterated trucks you'll see that in a second but let's yeah. walk inside we've got a couple of trucks parked inside and see the upper area where international trucks get repaired and then we'll uh go check out some other shops and i think we get a sneak peek on some of the stuff tim's working on let's go see it that map is so beautiful what's that it's a good thing you got a professional to paint it as everybody's been saying <laughs> oh i've read that crap i'm like man how do, why do people even say stuff like that so this is uh you haven't put this on youtube yet have you uh, we did. We shared some shorts and stuff. Okay, yeah. so you're getting to so see what it. What are you gonna do? Beat him too. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Weston Champlin. Chap. How, which one is it? Champlin. Champlin's cab. Yeah. That's been painted up and buffed out. This thing's looking fresh. Yeah, that looks pretty slick. It? it is. It's... You gonna make the frame look like that? Don't worry about that. <laughs> we'll make it very pretty though. Yeah. Like we'll make it shine. If we had the time, if we would have had two more weeks on this, it would have really been, I mean, it's it's nice now, but it would have been something else if we had a couple more weeks. Well, you better get used to working with YouTubers. Everything we do is last minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to see that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it could get any better than that, honestly. Yeah. So a lot of you guys are going to see where the hucks are not in the cab, and there's a reason behind that because... Well, more than one reason, it, not to interrupt you, but more than one reason. So you can lay the paint down better because a lot of these are going to get drips on them. No matter what kind of clear, you'll get drips on them if you really want to lay it down. The main reason I like to do it is because if someone's looking for a super slick finish, which he was, yeah. it's easier to buff when you go in here and buff your 
All this Emron has texture to it. So if you go in here and buff it out, you're gonna leave texture around where the rivets are. You just can't get it out and it just looks dumb. So we like to take them out and then get it nice and smooth and then put them back in. It's a little more work, but if you want something done nice, you gotta do it right, so. It looks slick, cool. Well, let's go see how much sanding you've got down on this frame in here. Not enough. Yeah. Dude, I'm playing with that amazing crane right now. He just rolled around in it, so it looks like he was. Tim decided he had too much free time yeah. before the truck goes, and now he's gonna pull the motor out. So they're wanting to go that color of the frame. Really? Get rid of the blue? That is gold. What? Like a gold, like so a gold. get rid of the blue completely now? Yeah. This guy's wanting to be a mats in 20 days with this. I thought we had a lot of work to do. Yeah, I'm not going to sleep for the next 20 days. I'll watch you not sleep. <laughs> so this is the inside of one of three shops. So this shop is mainly focused on international. Mainly just international up here, right? So FCR specializes in international trucks and Freightliner so that there is a parts inventory here. So if a truck comes in that's like obliterated, which we'll see some here in just a minute, you guys can roll one out usually on average in like three to four days from accident scene to... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on how long, you know, obviously they, they've had it at the tow yard and yeah. how long it takes us to pick it up. But usually when you call, we'll, we'll head out within... 24 to 48 hours to get the truck. Once they get it back here, uh, it's usually under 10 days. It just really depends on what the workload is here. Yeah. Once so that's that's kind of the claim truck. to fame is our turn time. So we we got to keep that pretty tight. I watched a truck literally on the frame like three days ago, and now it's painted. It's probably out of here already. It's <laughs> so. probably already in the wash bay. It was insane. Just I mean, the, uh, the whole back of the cab was crushed, and it was it took it all apart. It was. I mean, I'm just amazed. Yeah, I think I get used to it just because I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And then like when other people come in and they just watch for a few minutes and see trucks coming in and out. Oh my gosh. I was amazed by I mean, that. I was stuff. on the phone with my guys like, y'all better step in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So also the thing that we want to point out here is getting into doing more of the owner operator work yeah. too. So like Tim, or to total a truck or something like that. Tim's gonna be calling up Fitzgerald, say, "Hey, you know, can you come tow my truck off the side road? We can fix yeah. it." So, yeah, that's a big misconception. I mean, it's probably because we do mostly big fleets that we work with. Because, I mean, obviously, when you sell a big fleet, you'll get four or five hundred trucks a year. But to be honest, we just assume work with guys that's got one truck. Just that's the same. That's convenient. You, yeah, because your insurance is gonna take care of everything. Your tow, they got tow trucks. They got, I mean, the whole night you ain't gotta deal with nothing. Make a phone yeah. call, and it's. So we'll be putting some phone numbers down the, down in the description below to start reaching out to us. And who knows, once Brutus gets the DTU on it, maybe we'll be showing up to tow a truck here and there. Call Bruce. Yeah, call me. <laughs> so that's kind of exciting, but lots of uh, lots of parts on hand ready to be installed for International and Freightliner. Yep. Those are the really quick turnaround, but they still gonna be a better than average turnaround anywhere else with all brands, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's a handful that we don't do just because we don't have the, the dealer service behind us. I mean, that's the key. If you can't get the parts pretty quick, then you're not going to be able to make a quick turn time. But nonetheless, make phone calls and find out. Yep. We can work with that. So this is kind of the shop up here. This will maybe do a walk through the yard, see all the other cool tools. And uh, there's a frame machine in the other shop. Three paint booths up here. These are some big truck paint booths, too. And then uh, y'all got paint booths in the other shop. Yeah, we got three paint booths in the lower shop as well. So we there's six a trailer paint booth too, isn't there? No, we don't do the trailer paint. Okay. Yeah. Most of that's just panel replacement. Ah. Uh, all right. Well, let's start walking again. We get our steps in walking around this place. <laughs> Something to point out is a lot of these guys use the the segways running around here. Why don't we get you one? I've got one actually. <laughs> just got to bring it up. I have segway races. <laughs> After we sign the waivers. <laughs> How many of these you have in the fleet? Uh, I think there's eight of these. So, I think we got like 14 trucks that pull wrecks in, but a lot of them pull trailers too. So. Okay. So, pretty standard truck you see right here. This is actually a, like one you just got, right? Yeah, so, yeah, this was one of the last gliders that, that we bought. The guy actually had this truck put up in a building and only had like 40,000 miles on it when we bought it. So. so bought a glider that was brand new sitting in a barn basically yeah. put a zack lift on it this is real similar to the style 
uh, bed we're gonna be putting on the back of one of the on Brutus here. We'll, we'll see the bed over here in just a second. We'll find it. We don't get wet, but just a really sleek truck, and they're all 389s pretty much. You gotta have the best looking stuff to haul. To be the best, you gotta have the best, right? Yeah. We'll be honest, we really need to start buying a few more. We'll start with some more on some of the ones we got. Maybe that's a, a full resurrection on one. Take it on the road and then rebuild it. All right, well, let's make way before we get soon. This looks like a wedding thing. Yeah. So we had to make a mad dash to the shop and it started raining and hailing all at the same time. <laughs> but... That's a good day, we're all winded. <laughs> so it's Friday, obviously, but so the guys work like four tens or four twelve. Yeah, we do four tens. So you won't see a whole lot of people here today. <clears throat> so I guess we did kind of pick a good day for that. But uh, this is the shop where all the Freightliners, most of the Freightliners, get worked on, right? Yeah, no, this is where all the Freightliners come. Cool. Look at that. Shoot, big old frame machine. kind of cool, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Brian has no idea what Yeah, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so they could take a truck that looks like this, a U, and make it straight again. Oh, it gets a little dangerous. A couple weeks ago, I thought they busted that window out. Really something to miss it. Stuff flying off the oh, cab. Yeah, let's, let's start putting them in a bomb. Stuff popping. So, no, no, we're not scrapping frame rails and fixing them making it work. So, it's like they've been pulling on this one maybe right, here. right there. Yeah. That's an art form, too. Like you got to know oh, what you're doing. Yeah, you got to have the right guy to do it. There's the overhead cranes. It's going to be the ticket. This place is big. That'd be the ultimate prank. Ryan goes somewhere, his car stays here, comes back, and it's just up. No, 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 no. No <laughs> idea. You said you wanted to change your oil, right? No. <laughs> Need a forklift and radio up there. Yeah. Replacing the whole side of a cab right here. So you get parts directly from Freightliner. Yeah. yeah. So where we can really turn them fast is where we do the same truck over and over. We kind of took the kind of like a manufacturing approach. So we got one guy that does nothing but just change out panels. Huh. And like this particular panel right here, where it would normally take somebody a couple of days to do, I've seen him do it in three hours. Wow. And it's just because it's a repetition. And that, that's another big reason we try to stick with the, the two main trucks, the Freightliner and the International. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, you get them doing the same thing over and over every day, they get really good at it. Yeah, you've got the whole jig to set the cabs on right there. Look at that. Yes, yeah, so I actually made that when we first started because I couldn't find any way to get them square. Uh-huh. we can pull them in other direction. Also, once it's on there, it's mounted stiff, and then you can... Yeah, and then we'll put the, the rigs down there at the bottom and kind of pull it and twist it. Get it straight again. Yeah. Wow. So that's what they come in looking like. Yep. Yeah, that's a fine example of a... Jeez. That's actually pretty loud. You have the bent rim back there? Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so they can probably do this one too, guys. I got the bike. That maybe they jackknifed or something right there or something. Maybe they yeah, hit it. That's pretty common. I mean, we'll get a lot of them to get the back corner like that once they jackknife. Just cut the back of the cab apart. And, yeah. yeah. So on this end, you'll replace the back panel and probably the, the floor pan too. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the side panel. Take the whole side out for it. We know where to go when something bad happens, huh? <laughs> so these are all like more jigs that you design because not only do this rubber. Uh, repair semi trucks with lots of really cool, uh, what's Engin the word? Little, engineering, yeah. engineering projects. So, <laughs> I guess you could call it engineering. So, these are all cabs that have frames floating around here somewhere for them. Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of the unique part about our the way we do things is normally when you go into a body shop and they take a truck in there, it's they'll, they'll put it in one bay and then it'll live in that bay for you know 60 days. Whereas here, when the trucks come in, they go in like a million different pieces. And so like for a normal body shop might have two or three guys that work on it. One of these trucks might possibly get 40 guys that touch the truck. But that, that's kind of where our speed comes from, is just the numbers. Like an assembly line, yeah. but a repair line, I guess you yeah, could call it. Yeah, repair line. 
The more paint booth down here, is there something getting painted right now? Oh, yeah. Maybe we can go see that. Good job. We're going to have to work on these windows. You can kind of see it through the phone, actually. Really? Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Way better. Our eyes just oh, won't wow. focus. That's wild. There he goes. That's a Tennessee thing. What? That's wild. Yeah, Kyle, my buddy Kyle <laughs> says that all the time. Well, we say that's crazy. That's wild right there. <laughs> oh, you can see it. Oh, really? We'll get to see a lot more of this kind of stuff happening. Oh, yeah, it looks really good from here. All right. So, this is just like a touch of all the action that we'll be seeing through here. And if you guys call us to tow your truck, maybe it'll end up on a video getting repaired. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. But lots of hoods I see. Something I, you told me a while back, and maybe is it still true that so when a truck comes in and say it's got a cracked hood, the hood doesn't mean the hood's trash. So like if a fleet comes in with a, they own all these trucks, yeah. pull a cracked hood off, say you put a brand new one on that truck and it's gone, fix yeah. it back on the road. But you don't throw the cracked hood away. Sometimes the parts can be fixed to put on different right. trucks. So, so like a lot of the major fleets that run big volume through here, we keep a few hoods built up for them. And so yeah, a lot of times if it's just, you know, minor hood damage, I've seen trucks come in here and then they'll leave in a few hours. And then we'll just take the hood that's on the truck and repair it and it'll be ready for the next truck to come. So not wasting hardly anything. If it can be fixed, it's getting fixed. Yeah, oh yeah. So. Yeah, they'll pull the hoods apart and replace the fingers. Yeah, let's see. At least you can see some of these hoods right here that just have like repairs done to them. Yeah. Looks like some of them are just like ready to get painted already. Yeah. But they're probably going to spray them today, honestly. Huh? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice cab. What kind of other things can have installed? All these racks made for holding the hood specifically. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All those depainted doors are there. Look at that. Yeah, so those are ready to install. Ready to get installed. Look at this. We are. That's our kind of stuff. Yeah. And a 389 hood. I'm sure there's something Tommy got us under. Probably. <laughs> Something we're going to start seeing on videos is these these brothers bouncing off of each other. Yeah. Taking this little itty teeny teeny weeny bitty <laughs> shots at each other. Well, Tommy's All the salesman. Fun, though. Yeah, Tommy's the salesman, so he makes the commitments, and then he calls me and says, I need you to figure help this me out. figure this out. Because <laughs> I've already said I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be fun to see these guys bounce off each other on camera. Because Tommy's already, with semi-casual Tommy, is already on YouTube pretty heavy. But we're getting Robert there slowly. So this is like warehousing of parts for freight liners. Yeah, so this is all freight liner parts. See hoods and bumpers and doors and cabin panels. Yeah, that's really where the biggest difference is on our time too, is we just keep the stuff in stock. We're not waiting two to three weeks to get it. Not calling the dealer, waiting for them to LTL it over here or stuff like that. 389 hood though. I don't know what we need it for, but it's pretty cool to see one. Yeah. They're like it's prepped for certain trucks with, or certain fleets with they're already yeah, their, their colors. Yeah, we've got a handful of fleets that do this. They want to keep two or three hoods in stock at all times, so we try to keep a few of them built up back here. So we see, look how fast the dust builds up back here. Well, Crazy. body shop sanding and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it must be for Walmart if it's white. Yeah. yeah. We try to keep it clean, like clean air when we can, but man, it just takes a few days and the trap back to Dust, that is pretty cool to be able to say you do all the Walmart truck repairs. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Majority of them. Yeah. Look, <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> Bust me. <laughs> Dang, bro. Oh, leaf I guess leaf springs are probably a pretty common thing in accidents yeah. getting bent. Yeah, leaf springs are right. Oh, that axle housing right there. Look at that. Yeah. Ryan's like, where's that? What is it? I got it. <laughs> So just, they come out that door when they're all like all done, ready to rip. Yeah, yeah, you'll see them roll out of that door and they'll take them for a test drive. And then all of the final inspections are done at the upper building. So okay, typically after they roll out of here, they'll take them apart and go through the process. And we have a lot of cleaning up we need to do. 
after each truck gets put out. Oh, you mean like just out here in the yard? <laughs> That's what we're gonna come in. We're gonna go through here, guys, and start scrapping some of these trucks out and selling some parts off of them. Because and... a lot of these FCR ends up buying after they're uh, totaled out, yeah. so. Majority of the trucks we fix, but every once in a while we'll get one that's just not worth it by the time you spend the money on it. Yeah. We spotted a couple. I think we'll go we'll go down there and find those that are just twisted. Twisted up to say the least. But you'd be surprised, like I was really surprised when we first started doing this by what people were, will survive in these trucks. Like you'll see them completely mangled, like there's no way they'd survive. So yeah, they walked away. That is a crazy thought to think yeah. about actually. We, we see a lot of our fair share of videos on social media of trucks getting obliterated and the driver just steps out. Of it. Yeah, that was crazy. Dude, for real. Yeah, it's crazy. So off to the left here, we've got Big Bertha. And I think that's what we're going to name it. Yeah. What did you say earlier? What was the other name? Uh, Betsy. Big Betsy. Big Betsy. So this is a retired boat lift that Rob, your dad, you said your dad got a hold of it? Uh, we bought a property and it was sitting on the back corner of the property. It's kind of tore down so we took it apart and brought it over here and put it all back together and put a motor on it. So this helps for unloading trucks that are just can't be pulled down the road. Yeah. A little bit of everything. We, we've got all kinds of stuff we can put this thing to use for. It is pretty crazy. It's like the tires are on there too. Look at the mud, good gear. Look the mud grip. It's got something to put your 4 bt on. Yeah, it. right? An old gas four banger, <laughs> four cylinder, or Ford motor up there, it looks like. It looks like a Ford motor. Oh, it's a six cylinder. I guess it just looks small because it's so far up in the air. Yeah. That's all right. Well, there's the lift right there. It's going on Brutus. Let's go check that out. Yeah. Well, we'll put a smaller small. tanks on it. But we'll figure it out. Well, they make the small ones that bolt right behind them. Yeah, we only need like a 25-gallon tank or something. Not that much. What brand is this thing? It's a Miller also. FCR. Towing. FCR brand. <laughs> So this is the detachable towing unit. I think that's what, we better fact check this. <laughs> what does DTU stand for? Detachable towing unit. Yeah, I was right. I knew it. <laughs> so we're going to go through this thing, check all the cylinder seals and stuff like that. Make sure she don't have any hydraulic leaks. It doesn't look like it has any problems. No, it's probably just wearing her stuff more than anything. That bottom cylinder. I think this is the one. The oh yeah, that bottom cylinder is definitely leaking. So. Thankfully, we're handy in the uh, cylinder rebuild department. Get some of these things rebuilt, get it painted to match the truck. Thankfully, we got some paint shops around here. Should work out. <laughs> I know we're good. Yeah, I mean, we know a few guys. <laughs> Look at that one. They really turned your Oh my. I think that one got laid on the side. What do you think? I don't know. Probably. I don't know what that felt like. Looks new to me. <laughs> Brand new. So this is the sea of totaled trucks that are either being used for parts or they're just totaled out. It's the done lot. The done. To the, the end done, of the done line lot. lot. <laughs> we have a done lot and then a done done lot. This is the done done one. Yep. The done done done. <laughs> All kinds of rear axles, lots of stuff for us to thumb through and uh, dig around in lots of content to be had here that's why i'm like super excited to be up here because everywhere we turn there's some kind of semi-truck content to be made or do or something getting repaired something getting towed away you said you were gonna clean all of them right yeah that's the plan first thing first week it's clean first week. i could do that in about a week yeah i can't get all the we got a sea of aluminum wheels around here too man there is all kinds of stuff floating around here and that's a business we've never really focused on is the used part side. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just time. We haven't really took the time to time management to so figure it out. We're going to work through it. Yeah. Comment down below, guys. Do you see anything out here that you could use? And the top thing that we see that people could be using, we'll start pulling and selling. Oh, really cheap. Really cheap. <laughs> I mean, you got a nice bunk. Lake's been trying to find an apartment. I think we found it. There you go. Free towing. Six bedrooms or whatever. Shower. Bathroom. <laughs> Shitter. <laughs> All <laughs> above. So right over here in this building is where the trailer repair trailer happens. Repairs, yeah. yeah, we can go walk through it if you want. Yeah, that's not on YouTube at all. 
So it's a little dark in here right now. That's good. There is a sweet surprise hidden somewhere in here we're gonna find that's gonna be huge for the videos we're gonna find in just a second, but trailer repair. They literally somehow bring a truck in or a trailer in here that's been opened up like a can opener. That's been opened up like a can. And they somehow they sew it back together. I've seen some, we'll walk outside and look at all the trailers that are twisted open and some of them are pretty mangled. Pretty mangled, yeah. I think that's an understatement. I think this is probably one of the toughest jobs. Working with metal. During, well, if you come up here during the day when they're fixing like five or six trailers, mm -hmm. and everybody has rivet guns. So really? you can only yeah. imagine yeah, this constant hammering. There all you day go, long. look at that right there. Metal does not like to listen. Uh -oh. Is it behind that door? <laughs> Can you this? see me okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah knock the dust off this room. Uh oh boy. What is this? You'll see. What oh, are those do? <laughs> Is that a cardboard shredder? Yeah, that's a semi big rig dyno. Oh. This thing probably hasn't been used in three years, so we're gonna have some work that I just put crack not the dust off as it looks. Yeah. Just like a minute to get this in going. There's the dyno room right there. Yeah. Now we get to see what the full one semis. But Dude. We're gonna need some serious ventilation. <laughs> <laughs> we did have exhaust on there. We got some work cut out for us. <laughs> but this is an opportunity that's like game changing right here. This is awesome. Ryan still doesn't know what this is. Horsepower. Come on. Put my coat on and it'll show up at least in Pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. It might be worthwhile to find someone from the company that might could help us get her up in like tip tip top shape. Uh, I think we're probably. I think there at the end we had a couple of small issues with it and they just never fixed it because we wasn't using it very much. That makes sense. Yeah. Maybe we can find a use for it. There might be customers out there just want to know. What their trucks are at compared we to what used to, we When we built a lot of engines, we would bring guys in here and you know, they'd want their truck seated in and they'd want to you know, have a print out of what, what kind of power it's making. This is like a legit dyno room. Yeah. we got to fix that beeping now. I think it's the fire suppression system. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Have you guys seen the cherry on top of the icing, the cherry on the cake, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if your old Challenger can turn these wheels or not. All day long. <laughs> so is this repairable? Oh yeah. Minor, minor repair. <laughs> oh, I do smell it. Dude. Yeah. Well, you got to think about that. Like if a trailer gets wrecked and it's a reefer and it's full of like... Oh yeah, we get some nasty trailers in here. I've heard horror stories of like trailers just getting left and parked at places and storage lots and full of like yeah. chicken and like... Uh. Uh, just. So yeah, because if a trailer got hit, What's it I happen? mean, yeah, this thing is torn apart. Really? Uh, Maybe that's the smell. Probably is. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. I mean, I'd look at something like that and just write it off. Yeah, it's just done. Toast. There's really not much to them though when you break the floor. Like a little bit of corrosion going on on this guy. <laughs> I guess that's everywhere. Yeah. Literally peeled open. Man. I mean, I mean what do you got to hit to make it? They're going to be picking a lot of this stuff up on the side of the road, too. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait to pick up the first thing that, like, they just went under the bridge and just <laughs> open it up. They unload a trailer though on the side of the road and you guys got to pick it up by hand. <sighs> that's going to be crazy. Yeah. That'll be a it's sick a lot of it, too. Depending on the cargo, it's a big rough job. Yeah, the, t the towing operator's duty is to clean up whatever's on the side of the road. 
everything. I may get in a hurry too. That's one thing I hear with the troopers. They want they want it done. I want it done right now so yeah. traffic can start flowing. Can't again. leave it there for two days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that one's fire. That one might be that one might be done. What do you think? anything like that. Oh, so they can block each yeah. section off. That makes sense. Oh, or set different temperatures so in different each section. Yeah. Huh. I never got into learning it or looking at reapers and stuff like that close. It's different. So guys, this is the lobby area of the front building where we're going to be stationed at. So if anyone wants to come visit us, give it a few months. I know we had some visitors come visit our other shop. We'll have some merchandise set up in here, so if people do stop by, they can snack some uh, Bruce Wilson merch, and we're going to be branding some FCR towing and recovery merch, too. So that's going to be really exciting coming soon, but don't bombard the nice ladies here. They're very nice. But anyways, this is the downstairs. We're going to walk upstairs to our offices to come. Super exciting. Ryan's going to have his own little office space. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me that. Ryan's Tourette's are about to start going off. <laughs> Look at, listen. All right, dude, come on. All right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, walking through the hallway here, we're going to be upstairs and out of everybody's way. These guys run around on little segways everywhere, too. Uh, Amber bought me one, so thankfully I've got it. But, uh, upstairs. <laughs> He sounds like one of those little like blaster games. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so uh, upstairs space, we've got a conference room over here. We're gonna be excited to uh, give me some time to yell at everybody on a, on a morning basis. Ryan, be quiet. We're filming here. Great views, coffee maker, fridge, everything. Hmm. 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 Oh, we got Dish Network in here? Dude. Cook up the Xbox up in here. Yeah, we could. <laughs> call of Duty. For a lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> we hit two hour lunch breaks, you said, right? Yeah, definitely not. That's what you said. You come in an hour early. Down here, we got some other cool guys. We got Billy in here pretending to work. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> so, guys, this is Billy. He is the head of marketing here That's at right. FCR. I'm not pretending. Dude, what are you on YouTube right yeah, now or something? Check it Jeez. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I actually don't show him. <laughs> so, he's editing some videos right now, but we'll be working really close with Billy. He's the head of marketing here at FCR and doing some cool stuff together. He's going to be keeping us professional around here, I think. Mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> So, really cool guy. This is his op. Man, you got the best view. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Two, uh, two LBZs out there. In the, uh, in the summer, you can't get it much cooler than 80 up here, though. Really? Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so. I guess we shouldn't be complaining too much. Yeah, you got to weigh out the viewer, the heat. So, this is Billy. We're going to go down here and find Jacob. We're going to put him on the spotlight real quick. Outside the shop there. Ryan, dude, y'all started it, man. I can't help it. What's up, Jacob? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah. You're all, you're gonna be on video. You okay with that? No. <laughs> so Jacob's one of the editors here in house. Super exciting, dude. We're super pumped to work with a professional. I don't know about that. <laughs> and he's even got the view. We're we're comparing everybody's views here in the office. You've got, I guess you got a view of everybody out here working. They're like, oh, is he up in his office? <laughs> literally, literally, we're out there. I was like, is Jacob in his office? And I looked up here and seen you. <laughs> so, uh, this is the rundown of the of the crew. Super excited. Ryan's excited to be doing some editing with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we're just doing a quick office tour. Sorry to bother you. It's okay. Oh. 
good. He's nervous. <laughs> you're, you're good. You're good. There's a, there's a He's like, oh, my, my desk is a mess. Discussion. You're good. You're good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go check out our offices. Moving over here, we've got an office space for Ryan. My office will be through here, which I'm kind of happy there aren't any windows. It'll be nice and cool. I'll have a shop view to see if Lake's out there working. And my own castle. I was going to say, you ain't going to be able to see if I'm working or not. You're gonna be I know. There. That'd be nice. So. Oh, boy. Dude, no right one here. wants to see her. Nobody wants that. What? Need a Dodge Charger. We don't want to get crap all over the wall. Hey, that's my spot. Whatever. I have a picture of my family and my car. All right, I can understand the family thing. Not an RT. <laughs> you better watch it, buddy. That RT will whoop up on your truck. I heard Courtney's ex-boyfriend had an SRT. Yeah, she definitely didn't. He barely even had a car. SRT8. <laughs> oh. Dodge Neon. It had the face on the dash, like with the yellow eye, something about, I don't know what that yeah. meant. I don't know what it means either. Oh. 